Hey y'all, it's Pam with 44 Marketplace and Creative Finishes by Pam. And as you can tell, we are back in one of my favorite places in the entire world. We're on my screen porch. And um, I do want to go back and go over the video that I did the other day. Several people have asked me about getting a better view so that you can see me, uh, see the black that we put the... Um, top coating over. So I'm in the process of building something so that you guys can have a direct overhead view of what I've done. I haven't messed with it since we did our, our live. And um, so I'm going to get you an overhead view. Hey, Sandy. Um, that way you guys can see, trying to make sure my dog doesn't knock us over. So that way you guys can see, hey, Dar, happy Tuesday. It's been a great one, hasn't it? Um, that way you guys can see what it looks like without the streaks on it. Um, I had a couple people that reached out to me and you guys have my number, I post it everywhere. Hey Sherry, in the case you have questions about putting the top coat over dark colors. Um, I guess some people didn't like the view and some people had questions and some people were still having issues. Um, reach out to me via text message or via message and I will be happy to call you back or whatever, and we'll talk through whatever you've got going on as far as why you're getting some streaks and stuff because there's lots of different things that you can do and there's lots of different things that you can that can cause it. Um, and I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. A lot of you guys think that I'm telling you you have to use Gator Hide. That is totally not true. Anybody who knows me knows that I don't tell you what product you should use. I tell you what product works best for me because like me and polycrylic, Oh, please. I cannot make that stuff work for me for anything. First of all, I don't really like the sheen. But girls, I just do not know. Hey, how are you, Betty? I just cannot um, get a good top coat out of that stuff. I don't know. I know it's my fault. I overwork it or whatever because I know lots of people that use it and they get great finishes. But for me, it just sucks. It is not the bomb diggity, let me tell you. Um, I've tried the aerosol. I run it through my sprayer. I've done everything, and I just can't make it get a good one. Um, but tonight, what we're talking about is a lot of people ask me what makes it, why are their finishes so hard to accomplish? And so tonight, that's what I want to talk to you guys about. Um, it Some things are necessary, and some things just make it easier for you. Everybody like and share because we are going to give away paint tonight. And I want to tell everybody, anybody who has uh, ordered paint from me, um, I've got a paint delivery coming tomorrow and I'm going to ship everything that I can um, so that we're all caught up. But I, I'm sorry, we, you know, Dixie Bell was closed for a week or so, um, week 10 days for the holidays. And I just sold so much more paint than I ever dreamed that I would. But it's coming, I promise. And we're going to send a few little surprises in there for you guys who have been so patient with us. So tonight, it is about uh, tools. See, your sander. I love my sander too, girl. I love it. Good, Debbie. I'm so glad you did. Some people are still waiting, and it's not for lack of trying. We are doing everything we can. So tonight, I want to talk to you about some tools that I can tell you from experience. They're not necessary um, but they are very important to me to making my finishes so much easier. You know, it's kind of like, can you cook good cornbread without an, an iron skillet? Yeah, you can, but it's so easy in an iron skillet, right? You know what I'm saying. Okay, so um, when it comes to top coats, you guys saw that I do like my Dixie Belle brushes. Um, I love these. They are the bomb diggity, and if you haven't tried them, then you really should. But besides that, I use top coat sponges. These are synthetic silk sponges, um, and I use two different sizes, and I use them kind of interchangeably. Uh, but the first thing I do when I get them, I rinse them with warm water, and then I use them, and like I showed you guys the other night, these are great. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with um, Dixie Belle's blue sponges because they're fantastic, but some of my customers had some problems with Dixie Belle's blue sponges. So I went out and I found these, and I love them. I got to tell you, they are definitely the bomb diggity. They're great for whitewashing. They're great for adding top coats. I mean, these are just amazing. And I don't know if you can tell. Can you see how dense these are? That's why they work really, 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 really well. 
Hey, Janet, are you getting excited about boot camp? I am. Um, and this is the kind of sponge that I uh, use for whitewashing a lot. If I'm whitewashing a fireplace or whitewashing like white uh, yellow pine or something like that or gray washing it or whatever, I love these. Can you see how big this is? It's really good. It holds a lot of product. It's very, very good for that kind of thing. Um, I have to have my scrubby soap. I don't know if you guys have scrubby soap. Um, you know, if you have problems with the, the uh, blue sponge, try the synthetic silk ones. They're really, really good. Um, can you hear my little girl? She's back. She's snoring. She is feeling a little better. We're a week out, so she's feeling better. Okay, so this is scrubby soap. A lot of the retailers will sell uh, the scrubby soap. If they don't, try to find it somewhere. This stuff is soap with a little sponge it made inside it. Um, it's great for cleaning everything, cleaning everything in your house. But I love it for, it keeps my hands from drying out because you guys know I don't wear gloves. Um, it, it keeps my hands from drying out and everything. I know, Janet, you're in the first boot camp, you and Sandy. Okay, so um, those are my top coat sponges. And I told you guys, uh, these, the Dixie Bell brushes, you guys know me. Um, I'm a synthetic sponge, I'm a synthetic brush kind of girl. Um, I love these, but some people have complained about price points on these. They are worth the money. Let me tell you, they are worth the money. Yes, Carmen, aren't they? And Carmen, that dresser you did was to die for a girl. Let me tell you, it's beautiful. Um, I sell Chalk Pro synthetic brushes. Okay, yes, the soap is safe for sensitive skin. Uh, no, scrubby soap is to clean my brushes and stuff. Um, white lightning is for cleaning furniture. I, I wouldn't turn that down for a minute. These are Chalk Pro synthetic brushes. Um, the price point on these is uh, usually nine or ten bucks, something like that. You can tell mine is very well loved. Um, I have a lot of these, okay? They are fantastic. If you don't want to invest a lot of money, but you do want a synthetic brush, these are fantastic. Terry synthetic brushes, if you keep them damp, you see my sweet Mr. Bottle. With a Mr. Bottle and a synthetic brush, you will not, not at all, you will not um, want to uh, have any brush strokes. Synthetic brushes and Mr. Bottle equal no, no brush strokes. The soap is scented orange or lemon lime or lemon, I think. Okay, and then, see, Dar, they're fantastic, aren't they? Um, I keep them in several different sizes. All of them aren't angled, but the ones that I use in my kitchens, I like the angled, especially if you're going to do something that has a lot of crevices. These are great. The two-inch sits in your hand. It has a short handle. It's fantastic. Um, but I do, hey, Diane, um, I, I do, I, I love them, I got to tell you. And um, it's fantastic. You bought a Chalk Pro at Home Depot? I don't think Home Depot sells Chalk Pro. They, uh, they sell a lot of different ones, but they don't sell Chalk Pro. Um, Chalk Pro is an independent company that usually just sells to, to small businesses. Um, and then this right here, my Paint Pixie. If you're coming to my uh, boot camps, you're going to see, you're going to love, love, love. Um, Paint Pixie French Round. Can you guys see how that one is? Mine's a little frayed, but honey, this is a, an amazing brush, especially for getting in cracks and crevices, getting in details, things like that. It's amazing. A lot of the Dixie Bell retailers sell them. Um, I, yeah, I don't like Wooster at all. Um, a lot of them do it. If you're going to be doing aubergine blending, you definitely want to paint Pixie French Round, and there's a smaller one. But I really, really like these. I mean, I really like these. Um, I sell them in my store, and I sell them online. And you can tell. I mean, look at this thing. I can't tell you how many times I've used this thing, and it's amazing. Paint Pixie is great for blending. Um, I have some that I bought overseas. They're from Germany. Um, and you can see my little cords coming loose. But I bought these before Paint Pixie came out. And um, if you're blending or getting into... Crates, creases, and crevices. I can't talk tonight. You will love this. Now, that being said, I use a ton of these, and um, I, I am all about some chip brushes. 
chip brushes are amazing for, you know, doing your dry brushing and miscellaneous things like that. Uh, but they are natural bristles, so they do hold a little bit more paint. And I have a lot of people that say that they shed a lot. But now the ones that I buy, I buy actually from Chalk Pro. Um, they do not shed that much. But now I rinse mine on, under warm water before I ever use them. Uh, the top coat sponges, I sell them. Um, I don't know. I, I think some of the other Dixie Bell retailers sell them. I don't know that they even have a brand name. They're just synthetic silk. Um, but if you, if you don't have a ton of these laying around, you should. Chip brushes are amazing. Um, a lot of people don't keep them till they look like this, but I am frugal to a, a fault because I love these things. They're great for everything, and I rinse them out. Another thing that I have is a lot of these. Um, if you're going to do a lot of detail work, if you're using gilding wax, um, I don't know if you guys know what gilding wax is. Um, Chalk Pro, uh, I mean, Dixie Bell brushes are the bomb diggity without a doubt. Um, but I will tell you that it is amazing, the, the Chalk Pro brushes. They're great. Uh, I use these a lot. I uh, sell them in a pack like this. But I use these for my detail work. Because a lot of times I am wanting to... Uh, I just really want to get into the details and get in the creases and crevices and stuff. Really... Uh, on point. You know what I mean? And I'm going to tell you, these really do the trick for me. You can see I go through these like nobody's business uh, because I use them for paint. I use them for gilding wax and everything. In fact, can you see in the bottom of my bag here how many brushes I have? Because as somebody stated, I don't wash my wax brushes. Now, my gilding wax brushes, I do, but my wax brushes, I don't ever wash them. And once I use one of these for wax, I, it doesn't go back into paint. I don't ever wash it out. I just keep them there together and I keep them in my plastic bag. And I keep all of this in a plastic tub so that they're sealed up. But um, I use a lot of these. So if you guys have questions, I think a lot of people get caught up in using bigger brushes and they have a hard time with detail work. But I'm telling you, things like this make your life so much easier if you'll use these. Um, but, you know, I love my angle brush here too. But I'm not saying that this one is better than this one. This one works for different things than this one does. So that's why there's a difference. This one is has a different kind of bristle. This one doesn't. I mean, there's a lot of things. Besides that, I, I like to have some textured rollers. Um, I have all kinds of texture because sometimes you want to use these to put paint on with and sometimes you want to use these to take paint off with. Do you know what I mean? You cut, you paint your surface, and then you go back over this, and it actually leaves a, a pattern in your paint where it pulls it off. You roll over it a couple of times and then wipe it off and roll over it a couple of times. This is my crocodile print, but I have flowers, and I have so many different ones. Um, I don't sell these yet, but I am going to begin selling them in the summer. But um, these are great. I mean, I have a lot of these, and they're so great cleanup. As soon as I finish using them, I just throw them in a bucket of warm water and they wash right up. Another thing that you got to have is this. I get a lot of these like at the Dollar Tree or at Ace or something like that. These are great for mudding your pieces. I have some wide ones, narrow ones. But these also are a big help um, if you want to get pieces off. Because, because some pieces are not screwed on like handles and such. They've got little brad nails that hold them in place. These are flat enough that you can get them under your details, your escutcheons and such as that, and pop them off so that you don't mess up your piece. Because if you try to do it with a screwdriver or something, that'll mess up your piece of furniture. It'll leave gouges. So this is definitely something. Um, I will, Betty. I'll do that. This is definitely something. You can see it's got still got mud on it and stuff like that. I try to rinse them off, but you know what? If I don't, I just end up using them for something else. It's not that big a deal. Another thing is um, a lot of times I keep all of these little plastic trays and stuff because I'm always mixing paint or something like that. I don't want to have to wash everything out. I just throw it away. So I save these after we have microwave meals or something. And, you know, they're made of plastic. Why throw them away yet? So I use these for mixing custom colors up pouring my paint in so I don't um, 
contaminate my paint. We have hard water, water here. And if you put it in your paint, even if you spray your brush and then put it in your paint, if you get that hard water in your paint, it kind of smells like a septic tank or something. It's so gross um, if you shut it up and let it sit. So uh, it's nasty. <laughs> I'm just telling you. So save these kind of things because they're great for putting paint in and such as that. And sure, you can rinse them out, but you can always throw them away after you use them. Another thing I like to use is my dog food trays. Here's a shout out for For Hell. Um, there you go. You can use distilled water, but Debbie, when I'm painting, I just go and fill it up at the sink and spray it on there because the paint that I pour out to use, I'm not gonna put back in my container anyway because it's been contaminated by whatever was on the surface and I'm really weird about contaminating my paint. So I don't usually, once my brush has touched it, we don't put it back in the, the bottle anymore. This is what I use to uh, for dry brushing and such because it's great to have a piece of cardboard and when it's got sides on it, it keeps me from flicking paint all over everything else in my paint booth. Hey, Billy! And, you know, I can be the messiest person in the world sometimes and this really helps me. Plus, I'll use the inside and once the paint dries, I'll use the outside for dry brushing. You know, unloading your brush so that you can just put a little bit on there. Those are my main things that I really like to use. Um, but if there's something I have to, have to, have to have, I have to have a Mr. Bottle. I use a Mr. Bottle on every single finish that I do. Um, it's just one of those things. And I don't use a spray bottle from the dollar store. I use a Mr. Bottle. FIFO bottles, absolutely. They're actually sitting in my breakfast room right now. I refilled them because I have three classes this weekend. So yes, I use FIFO bottles uh, for all of my classes and for my, my own personal painting a lot of the time. Does everybody know what a FIFO bottle is? Um, hang on, let me grab one. Y'all can listen to the dog snore while I grab one. My FIFO bottles are a little messy, but um, this is what my FIFO bottles look like. I have labels on them that say Dixie Belle, and um, they have a little cap, and when you turn them upside down like this, you can just dispense however much you want. They're great. They're airtight. So, um, yes, I put top coats. I have a FIFO bottle labeled for all 64 colors, and then I also have one for all of the top coats as well. Um, because it really makes a huge difference. Dar, I've had paint in these FIFO bottles for four years. Um, I started using FIFO bo bottles a long time ago. Oh, good. Are you coming, Felicia? Great. It's hard for me to remember. I've got so many classes this month. Who's in what class? But yes, I will be at the Big Peach, and we've got a big class. So um, this is what a FIFO bottle is, and it actually opens on this end and on this end. And you can actually change your spouts out if you want to. Some of them um, come in a larger one. I usually just get the small one because we're just dispensing some paint. And I use little two ounce cups in class. And I use these in my warehouse. So that way you can know. But something that I won't give up is Mr. Bottles and Chalk Pro Brushes. Um, it, it is, um, I mean, those are my go-tos and my top coat sponges. So, I mean, those are my go-tos that I always have. My FIFO bottles, I, like I say, I've had them for four years, and I don't really think about not having them because who wants to open a paint jar? You got to wipe around the edge and all this, and this, I just turn it upside down, and out it comes. So, I don't really have to worry about it. Hey, girl, how are you? Um, so, if you guys have never looked into FIFO bottles, if you paint a lot, like this one is drop cloth. I think I have three FIFO bottles of drop cloth so that I can have one in my class basket, I've got one in my workshop, and I've got one here. Um, so that way, I keep all of my class paints in crates that I carry from place to place and keep them in my classroom here. But I don't keep my bottles in my classroom. Um, I have other FIFO bottles that are mine. Um, and I keep those in my warehouse in their own little crate. And I also have some 
here at the house for my basic colors. I think I have caviar, I have coffee bean, because you guys know how I love um, coffee bean. How much does it hold? I get 16 ounce FIFO bottles. I have not had a problem with my FIFOs clogging, but now I keep mine uh, spout end up. But if, um, if you don't like it, you can always just screw this right off and rinse it out and that'll fix it right up for you. Hey, Pamela. So, um, a lot of times people, uh, you don't have to have all these things. I don't want anybody to think you have to have all these things, but it just makes your finishes a lot easier. If you have a synthetic brush, be it whatever kind it is, you can have, I mean, maybe, um, my friend Lisa, she doesn't use, uh, what does Lisa use? Lisa uses a different brand of synthetic brush. Um, and I mean, whatever works best for you, pick a synthetic brush. You need one synthetic brush, at least. You need chip brushes. If you get, if you pay a few dollars more, you can get good chip brushes. If you get those chip brushes at Harbor Freight, a lot of times they'll shed a lot on your project. Hey, Heather, I gotta call you, girl. Um, and then, you know, this is an indulgence, I know. It's not cheap, but I'm telling you, Paint Pixie brushes really are something that make your life so much easier. Are they, are they needed? Yes. <laughs> I do need mine. Um, but as far as I, I would say, I need a synthetic paintbrush. I need a Mr. Bottle. And I need chip brushes. But the rest of it, because this is what I do, I like to have all of my little toys and, and trinkets, you know? Um, I mean, I can't do without these. If I mess up one of these, I flip out because I've got to have another one. I have packs and packs of these stacked up in my warehouse so that when I get ready to glaze kitchen cabinets, when I get ready to do detail work, when I teach blending classes, whatever. When I teach blending classes, we use these. They're mine, but I offer to let anybody that wants to, they can buy one because they are amazing. So that's what I just wanted to go on at on here tonight just to kind of yes donna you can get fifo bottles um four years ago you could not get <laughs> thank you Kristen. i know she's loud four years ago you could not get decent fifo bottles from amazon i did not like the ones i ordered so i ordered ordered them from webstaurant and they were great but now um i think the last ones because you know over time you misplace them they get broken from being dropped in classes and stuff I got some from Amazon last year, I think, and they were great. Um, I get the 16, uh, 16 ounce ones in a, in a group. I think I got a dozen of them the last time um, Dixie Bell came out with new colors. But now I also sell a lot of them because a lot of my customers like picking up a FIFO bottle for their basic colors, you know, drop cloth, fluff, sandbar, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of times you guys know that you can get these kind of things if you're doing a mud class. Uh, a lot of times you can get these at the Dollar Tree for just nearly nothing. Rather than getting a plastic one, you can get them at the Dollar Tree and they're metal. And they clean up a lot better. That is Isabel. She is a Neapolitan Mastiff. And this is her contribution to my lives. She loves to be here with me and just snow her. And uh, she's been very sick. So, she gets away with a lot right now. Um, she actually has Demodex, which is unusual for a grown, healthy dog to get. But she's on medication, and we have Demodex. So, we're kind of struggling through that right now. But she looks better today, and she seems better. Um, and, you know, at 175 pounds, she snores pretty loudly. <laughs> So, if you guys have questions, um, somebody requested that I do something with one of my textured rollers. Uh, they are the silicone textured rollers. I will uh, do that coming up. We are going to have several lives this week. And um, hopefully tomorrow I get my paint in so I don't feel like I'm on everybody's bad list for not shipping the paint. But I promise you guys, as the second the rest of my paint comes in, the rest of these orders are going out. I am so sorry, but... I'm doing all I can do, and that's all you can do, right? Just do your best. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Thank you, guys. She is a sweetheart. Um, all of mine are rescues. 
Uh, so they're very special indeed. Did you hear her snuffling around because I said her name? Busy Bee? <laughs> She's not even going to wake up and talk to me. Okay, so if nobody has questions, then I'm going to let you guys go for the night. And um, be sure and like and share. I'm also on YouTube. I am really working hard to get my YouTube channel up. So if you guys don't mind, please go on and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'm going to have several new YouTube-only videos coming out in the next couple of weeks. Um, I've got lots of those that I'm working on um, that are just for YouTube. And I'm hoping to uh, go live on here several times. So if there's something you want me to address, please give me a, a drop me a private message, send me a text message, or comment on here. And I am going to be giving away an 8-ounce paint in your choice of color to one lucky winner tonight. So like and share and comment, tag your friends, and I will pick a winner tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great evening.